main thing is for our viewers, he is okay. He's got a broken nose, some, some cut stitches. Here we go. Yeah, I, I mean, but yeah, he is okay. There's no Christian, there's no life threatening uh, component to it at all, but he really looks bad, and although he says he doesn't feel that bad. He had surgery, minor surgery, and he's going to get it attended to in Paris next week. He will be traveling with Pete to Paris for the Paris indoor next week, and that'll be on ESPN starting Thursday. 15 love. Fifteen on. When you look at these two guys, uh, the first serve percentages, Becker's had 61%. Here's another look at that last point. A little sort of shaky move here by Becker. He guessed correctly, but mistimed the ball completely. 61% of first serves for Becker, 55 for Sampras. First serve points won 85% for Sampras, 86 for Becker. Very, very close. You were talking about the head-to-head -head just a moment ago, Tony. How important is the head-to-head? -head? I mean, you've got these guys the last four times they've played as you watch this replay won by Sampras. Yeah, Beck with a good backhand volley there. Well, I, in, when you're at this level, I don't think it means a whole lot, frankly. Uh, okay. You know, you get me once, I'll get you next time. 40, 50. Ace by Becker, 40-15, game point. First game, best of three set semifinal. The championship match, as you watch the replay, will be best of five sets. As you mentioned, last time they played was on clay. That has nothing to do with this fast indoor surface. Totally different circumstance. Becker has never won a clay court tournament. Second serve ace from Becker, a couple of aces in that game. He wins this tournament. He is going to be a certainty for Frankfurt. I think he's going to make it anyway. The winner here will get 330 points and take home $244,000, finalist 130. Pete Sampras serving, second game, Final second serve. 130,000 bucks, but he gets 235 points. And for these guys, that's as important. That's an interesting play to me for Sampras, a guy that serves as well as he does. He serves a second serve, stays back, lets Becker come in, then he has to make the passing shot. I just don't think that's like, I don't think that's a good tactic for a guy like Sampras or Becker. Oh, a beautiful stretch volley. Let's watch Sampras when he stretches after this half volley. This is done on purpose, this angle. That was not luck. He was aiming it in that direction, soft hands. 30 love. And an ace. And he's got a couple, three game points. I talked to Pete a couple of days ago in the locker room. I asked him how he feels. He said, I real f feel fine now. He does wear a little bit of an ankle brace when he plays. The other leg injury has been taken care of, apparently. That's a terrific passing shot from Becker. Still game points for Sampras. The latest injury at uh, the Davis Cup. Take a look 15. at this again. Watch how strong Becker is with him. He's fallen backwards, and just with his arm strength, he got that ball cross court. It was a ligament, apparently, just behind the knee. It wasn't actually a knee injury as, as such. Game point. Game, Sampras. And it was something that healed pretty quickly as well. And they apparently put his leg in a soft cast for five or six days, yeah. and then did some therapy. He said something about bursitis involved in it, but at any rate, he thinks he's okay now. Yeah, Sampras' main problem, Tony, is, is just lack of match play, as we've been saying. Since Wimbledon, he only played that U.S. Open couple of Davis Cups, and that takes its toll, at least in his mind it does, because I asked him about that. He said, you know, if you don't play all the time, you sort of, you lose a little conditioning. Oh. Which, by the way, I really don't agree with that much, because so many of the players will take off six weeks and get into great shape and come back and say, I've never felt better. I'll, I'll touch on that in just a second. 
Talk to you loud. The difference, I think, is that, that in Sampras's case, when he hurt his ankle, he couldn't train and he couldn't play. Mm -hmm. So now you really, you really sit there and just sort of just get out of shape. If you, if you were hurt an arm or something else, you could still run and do road work and stay pretty much in shape. I think that was a big problem for Pete. And those guys that take the six weeks off, they don't do nothing. They exercise and do plenty to stay physically fit. They just get away from the tennis court some. Dirty love. Up. Forty love. Game points for Becker. A one point against serve so far. Oh. Imagine the guy sitting up in the in the stand saying, "Well, boy, he's human. He serves doubles too, just like I do at the club." <laughs> and that was not a close one. He missed hit that one, missed it badly. Good. Big return from Sampras. It's 40-30, still game point for Becker. We talked a little bit yesterday, Tony, about Becker and his serve motion. As you look at it again here, it's a complicated motion still, although he is trying to make it less complicated. That time Sampras was looking for the wide serve, got out there early enough to be able to get it back cross court. Versus. Sampras does a good job throughout a match of getting a lot of serves back. Get him in play. And then on the back end, oftentimes, you're just trying to get the ball down low, not trying to do too much with it. I always like to point out that he was basically, as a kid, a baseliner, a two-handed mm -hmm. player before he became an aggressive player. So he's got every shot in the book, which is what makes him so dangerous. Another double deuce. fall from Becker, and it's deuce. That appeared to be a, a, a high toss. He got his body weight out ahead and had to sort of wait for the ball. You notice something new on Sampras. Got a little mustache and a little goatee, and I was kidding him about it, and he said, uh, I just thought I'd have a little fun while I'm here in Stockholm, but he said, maybe I might shave it off if I get to the finals. Advantage, Becker. It's ace number four for Becker. Been very successful going wide to the forehand in the deuce court. We'll see if Sampras modifies his stance a little bit. Another one of the forehand side. Becker holds on, no breaks, two games to one. But Sampras a little, lot closer in that serve game. And the match will be best of five sets. The winner of this match will take on either Kafelnikov or Ivan Izovich, who play tonight. As you were saying in the open, Tony, Pete Sampras' Super 9 results have been really super this year. He has not oh. lost a match, 20-0. and 0. He won Indian Wells over Peter Court in the final, and Key Biscayne beat Agassiz in Rome. Boris Becker was a victim of his. 15 off. Of course, one of the reasons we always talk about the Sampras serve, yesterday in his match against Magnus Larsen, you want to hear this, he lost five points on his serve in the entire match. It's, it's awesome, five isn't it? Five <laughs> points, and he won 6-1, six, 6-4. Six, you don't really feel threatened if you can do that. If you were watching ESPN yesterday, Becker took out Michael Stich, tiebreak in the first set. Seven points to three, and then he won the second behind one breaker serve. There was only one breaker serve in that match. Becker won it 7-6, 6-3. Wide. 
who I was alluding to earlier. Sanford stays back on his second serve. Now you're in a rally. Becker comes in on a short ball, and Sampras has to be the one to try to make the good shot. If he goes in behind his second serve, Becker has to be the one to make the good shot. The eight titles that Sampras has won more than anybody, and then the injuries really prevented him from doing even better in the second half of the year. Basically, the entire summer season in the U.S. outside of playing the U.S. Open. Game, Sampras. And losing there as he wins that game to Jaime Izaga in a dramatic five-set match. Two games all. Will he count? Here's another look at the serve. Well placed. Got Becker off balance. You see him way out of position, stabbing at it, hopefully. Friends here at Swedish TV like the replay of that service court area and the ball bouncing yeah, right, in it. Yeah. Yeah. We're not arguing as good. We like to see something else. That's what Sampras tries to do off the second serve. Well, a real miss hit by Sampras. And the extra topspin brought it down a miss hit that lands in that's the second off the backhand side left 32 games all Becker stand there with his hands on his hips watch this one a good serve a, another miss hit off the frame Perfectly placed. Becker turned around his hands on his hips saying, you know, what is going on here? He missed it. Now, Tony, do you feel the same way you were talking yesterday about Michael Steakin uh, having to serve into his forehand side, given the, your druthers every time? Do you feel the same way about Sampras? My feeling is that his forehand has improved dramatically here in the last 12 months. I'd probably serve more to Pete's backhand because he blocks more balls back. Such on. Ace number five for Becker. Because we watched him play at the Italian Championships closely, you know, and uh, Vitas was talking to him a lot about how to win the French Championships, and he was saying, frankly, he said, I only have to win it behind putting the ball away off my forehand side. So he was running around a lot of mm -hmm. backhands and really clucking the forehand. I think it had helped his game. 30 all. Game point Becker coming up. Three in a row for Becker. Well placed right down the center. He'd been going wide. That's one of the things about being a good server. You've got to mix it up some. You can't keep going the same place. Very short preparation that time. Watch Sampras if we can. Doesn't take the racket back very far. Uses the speed on the serve. Just directs it well. Able to get over the top of it. That helps bring the ball back down into the court. Deuce. Break point for Sampras. You kind of gloss over a few things that you say, Tony, like not taking the racket back too far. And I, I, well, I, it's really a, an important lesson for so many amateur players out there. So many players now with all this topspin and the long swings that they see, in my opinion, take the racket back way too far. Right. Compact is good. Break point, Sampras. He puts that compact swing to work of the forehand side. Again, Becker pays the price. He is broken. 3-2. Sampras to serve. Sampras leads. 3-2. Break of serve. He leads now by three games to two. Championship match tomorrow. Live coverage here on ESPN. It'll be 3 p.m. Stockholm time. That's 9 a.m. Eastern time in the United States. Hope you'll join us for that best of five set match. After a couple of mishit passing shots, a couple of very crisp forehand returns paid off for Sampras.
Love 15. Love 15. You know, unless you know something special about a player, when somebody tops the ball, I think you basically look for a, a, a pull in that situation down the line. Sanford was not looking for that at all. Oh. Yep, no. good. That uh, really lethal forehand now of Sampras is much more consistent now than he used to be. Much more consistent. And I mean, he doesn't, it's not like he's just trying to get the ball in play. He's trying to win the point of that side. He was behind the baseline, hit a clean winner. 15 all. He is so confident, Tony, on his own serve games now. It's really scary. Well, again, when you, when you win it, here's another look at that last point. Good job Don't by you, Becker. He guessed right here, got it back, stayed there, got another one back, and then Sampras let that one go. When you win 85% of your first serve points, 70% of your second serve points, uh, you should be pretty confident. 30-15. The only double for Sampras to this point. If you're in Becker's shoes at this stage, you know that he understands that it's crucial every point here in an effort to try to break Sampras to serve. As we said, and you pointed out, he only lost five points in the match in his, in, in his last round. 30 or. Oh, yes. A very poor volley surprised me by Sampras. He did nothing at all with his backhand volley when he comes in. He blocks it back straight down the middle of the court. I don't know what he was thinking there. Gave Becker plenty of time. If he'd angled that thing cross court, no way you could have gotten to it. Gotta believe it was a miss hit yep. and he wasn't trying to hit that volley like that. Break point. Down the line and he's got the break back. Who would have put anything on his ability to be able to do that after Sampras had broken him. Terrific comeback by Becker as he hits his forehand for a clean winner. Watch. Watch the good racket preparation right here by Becker. He had the racket ready early, able to get around the outside of the ball to get over it and keep it on line. Terrific effort. They always say the time to try to get your break is after they've broken you. They either relax a little bit or get too careful. Fifty love. Seven. It's a lot of aces in three service games. Thirty love. Yeah, thank goodness the court's a little slower than it was earlier in the week. <laughs> Otherwise, there'd have been even more. I'm kidding. It's not much slower. No. Thirty love. There's a good example of just using the pace on the serve. Good serve 40, by Becker. 15. Sampras, not a big backswing. Good firm wrist, keep that racket head firm when you hit the ball. Steers that one 40, wide. 30. Still game point for Becker. This is Saturday afternoon live here in Stockholm. And just after 1.30 in the afternoon. 
The other single semi-final match between Kofelnikov and Ivanisevich will be played tonight. Nevertheless, as you can tell, a very sparse crowd here this afternoon. Deuce. Well, interestingly, uh, Becker served to the Sampras forehand on this second serve. Jeez. He gets over it, gets it down, makes him hit a low volley. And again, if you're going to make Becker volley, you want to make it hit as many forehand volleys as you can because it's not nearly as secure as the backhand side. Is that one and long and Pete Sampras, Sampras has got a break point chance for a second break. He has just been broken. On serve, three games all. Break point Sampras. Well, Becker got in really nicely that time. He was in a good position to make that backhand volley. Just carried it a little bit long. Deuce. Fast crowd, as I was saying, for a Saturday afternoon here in Stockholm. The Stockholm Open is losing its Super 9 status next year, and they will flip-flop with uh, the tournament in um, Belgium. Antwerp, I Antwerp, think. Antwerp, excuse mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the Antwerp tournament will take place this week next year. Deuce. Clipped the line. Jeez. Becker would like Sam a call, but he's not going to get one. And here's another breakpoint chance. Not not angry about the call at all, but again, a miss hit by Sampras off the forehand, and it rolls cross court at an angle and just lands on the line, I think. Yep, right on the paint. It's a breakpoint. At least three miss hits now that Sampras is knocked by Becker. Fine serve. It's interesting to me how the top players can get that big first serve Jeez. in under pressure so frequently. They can go and not serve very well for a game or two, but when they get down a break point, bing, they get that first one in. Deuce. Yep, another one of those hook forehands from Sampras. He's got so much confidence in that shot. This one didn't get Pete very That's wide at all. Watch where Sampras, Sampras is. See, he's not even outside the doubles alley. And he was looking for that one. And again, didn't try to take a big swing at it. Abbre abbreviated backswing. Third break point chance of this game. Dilemma for Becker now. How hard do you get this second serve down a break point? And do you come in behind it? Right. He's served three doubles to this point. Oh. Well, he answered that question. He put it in down the middle. He hit it very hard, got it in deep, and did come in. And he really didn't have a lot of spin on it, which was good. It made a heavier serve. Sampras knows he missed an opportunity there. Sampras got caught on the half volley just inside the baseline. Advantage, Becker. He was expecting a weaker return from Becker. Give Boris credit, made a fine shot under difficulty there.
Becker. Becker holds on, although he had a lot of trouble doing it. He's ahead four games to three, and he's a tremendous fighter. Let's four face it. See some really historic buildings down there. Four games to three. Becker in charge here in the first set on serve. They've traded one breaker serve. Oh. Love 15. So far, Sampras has been to the net 10 times and won five of them for 50%. Becker 11, uh, 24 times and won 11 for 46%. Oh. Becker has struggled a little bit more on his serve, so he's had to come in often because he played longer games. Fifteen all. Becker won his last Grand Slam title at the Australian in 91, became the number one player in the world as a result of that effort. Hasn't won a Grand Slam since then. I think he only stayed number one for about six weeks, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, it wasn't very long. Yeah. Last Super 9 event he won was uh, the Paris Indoor in 92. 30, 15. He's won this event three times. Pete Sampras has yet to win the Stockholm Open. Beck has played six Wimbledon finals. He has won three. Oh! 40, 15. That's a pretty good career in itself, isn't it? <laughs> Win three out of six at Wimbledon. Won the U.S. Open in 89. He won uh, Wimbledon and the U.S. Open that year. Game point, Sampras. Also won the Australian Open. Yeah, he won that in 91, as I said, and went for a run in the park and became the number one player. Mm -hmm. Game, Sampras. Four games all. Two early count. Four apiece, first set, best of three sets. The championship match tomorrow will be best of five. Kofelnikov and Ivan Izovich will battle it out tonight here in Stockholm. Kofelnikov took out Bruguera. For Kofelnikov, the number 11 seed, Bruguera number four seed, but not that unexpected because Kofelnikov likes the surface a lot more than Bruguera. And then in case you just joined us, uh, Ivan Izovich last night against Andre Agassi, the number nine seed, it took him 10-8 in the tie-break in the third set to take Agassi out. 15, love. 30, love. Nine aces for Becker, and he's fooling Sampras because Sampras isn't even flinching on some of them. That indicates that he, he can't pick it at all, or he's guessed incorrectly, but normally you guess you go one way and it goes the other. He's not even moving sometimes. Forty love. Game point. Game. Another race from Becker. Players are going to change ends and take a break. We will as well. Becker's looking very strong. Five games to four. Becker leads five four. Ten three off. Becker won it in 90 and 91. He beat Sampras both times. In 91, he beat him in the quarterfinals here. In 90, he beat him in the semifinals. Lendl, Edberg, McEnroe, all winners of the Stockholm Open. Sampras serving, trailing 4-5 first set. Fifty love. Fifteen all. 
Becker backhand is a shorter preparation, and he's trying to go over it. Was successful there. Be surprised if Pete doesn't come to the forehand side where Becker takes a bigger swing at it and is somewhat more erratic. First of Yep. That's real powerful ground stroking by Boris Becker. Sampras gets handcuffed right here. Barely gets his hand on that one. 15, and there he's got no chance. Beautiful play by Boris Becker. Oh, that's terrific. I tell you, he's playing very confident tennis. That backhand, again, a clean winner down the line, and he's got a couple of break and set points. Shaky forehand volley by Sampras. Did nothing 14. with it at all. It was nice and high. He had no pace on it, didn't get any depth on it, and now he's in trouble. just asking for trouble you know he's sort of steering the ball instead of hitting that first volley as you've been pointing out Tony and Becker uh, let's face it he has hit some terrific passing shots three backhand winners down the line in a row look at this on the run Becker gets the racket back early now he always to pull the trigger terrific shot from two or three yards behind the baseline first set to Becker 38 minutes he was down a break to Sampras and broke twice Fifteen love. Take another look here. Pete thinks this was out. Might have been. At any rate, it goes down as ace number 11 for Becker. He's been averaging just over 12 aces per match. Saying something to Lars Groff in the chair. But I couldn't get it. Fifteen all. Sound like you said to, to watch this match. That serve was so close. The, the umpire's not going to overrule anything like that. Here's another look at the good Becker serve and the outstanding pass. There's always one thing in common with the good ground strokes, and that's early racket preparation. Talked about Becker not winning a Grand Slam in quite a while. He has nevertheless had a very good year. Semi-final this year at Wimbledon. Losing to Ivan Izovich. Oh. And he had a good summer season in the U.S. He won New Haven over Michael Steak in the semifinal and Mark Rossane. He won L.A. over Mark Woodford and then Jason Stoltenberg in the semifinal. Stoltenberg had a very good summer season as well. That's the fourth double. In fact, going into the U.S. Open, uh, certainly I was saying that he would have to be one of a number of players in contention for the Open because he'd had such a good hard court season in the U.S. and then went out to Richie Renneberg in the first round in a long, long match. Game point, Becker. Game. Becker holds on, one game to love. 
Becker leading, and he won the first set 6-4. He was able to... Yeah, this year. We've got three players who are in for sure. The man that you're watching, Pete Sampras, also Goran Ivanizovic, number two seed here, and Sergi Bruguera. Michael Stieck at this stage is number three in points, but he is not a certainty because he has so many points to defend, and he is going to lose some as a result of losing here in the round of 16, having won it last year. But Stefan Edberg, he looks good. He does look good. And Becker, of course, as you say, uh, you know he's going to get there. Michael Chang, you're not so sure. I guess he had no points to defend. He was defeated last night. Uh, we're not sure what Beresetegi's doing down in South America, but he's very comfortable on clay. He's trying to win enough points to get into the to Frankfurt, which is the top eight players. And Todd Martin still has an outside shot. So does Wayne Ferreira, in truth, because he, does have, he doesn't have any points to defend. Fine. So if he has a good Paris indoor he could get in at the expense of somebody like an Andre Agassi for example or a Beresetegi or a Todd Martin. Right and as I mentioned in the opening if Boris Becker wins this event he's automatically in. And even a Yevgeny Kafelnikov he's in the semi-final here he has no points to defend and if he wins 300 points here he could also make it. Sampras to serve down one game to love he lost the first set he's taken on Becker in the semi-finals of the Stockholm Open. Fifty love. The ATP tour officials, I feel sorry for them because all of us press people are trying to pressure them into telling us who's going to make it to Frankfurt. But there are so many variables <laughs> sure. because you lose the points from that tournament of the previous year. And that you have to factor into the equation in addition to how well you do this year relative to how you did last year. Becker has obviously made up his mind. He's going to attack the Sampras second serve. Be aggressive. Watch see. this one. Just a rifle shot. Sampras has been getting just 55% of his first serves in. Sampras is not being as aggressive with the first serve as we're accustomed to seeing him, not going after the ace as much. Forty touching. Game point Sampras. Sampras holds on, Sampras. one game apiece in the second set. Tony, uh, just one observation from me, having watched these players, one as you watch this replay, you know, and you, the ebb and flow of their fortunes during the year. Sampras, just six months ago, was unbeatable in everybody's mind, which was worth a, at least a point a game to right. him because he'd won Wimbledon, he'd won the US Open, he'd won the Australian. The question was, could he win four in a row by winning the French? Jim Courier beats him at the French, but he follows that up by winning Wimbledon, and he really is unbeatable. Now, in the last six months, or since Wimbledon anyway, things have kind of changed. I think going into the Australian this year, people are going to wonder whether he is in fact beatable, which hurts him to a little bit, to uh, some extent. I agree. He, Pete's not playing as well now as he's playing then. We know he's been hurt. 15 left. Ace number 12. Part of the equation is how well you're playing. The other part of the equation is how vulnerable the other players think you are. Right. But, you know, you, you play as well as your opponent lets you play. When Sampras is really hot and playing well, he doesn't let you do much. Fifteen love, Becca. Fifteen on. That's his fifth double. That's the difficulty when you have the kind of injury Sampras had originally, the ankle. Mm -hmm. You can't train, you can't play. You just, you're a couch potato until the thing gets well enough and you go backwards very quickly. Oh. 
15, Tochi. Six double false. An opening for Sampras here. We have a German commentator that's sitting one table away from us, Tony, and you know, he's either got to be radio or they do a lot of talking yes. on TV. <laughs> Most people think we talk too much anyway <laughs> during the tennis telecast, but I'll tell you what, if you listen to him in Germany, it's a non-stop barrage of words. 15.30. Here's a real opportunity for Sampras now to get a couple of break points looking at the second serve. Fooled him. Touch off. Sampras feet didn't move at all. He was obviously looking for a backhand and he wasn't bouncing at all and he got trapped flat footed. Smart serve by Becker. He has really fooled Sampras a lot on his serve. I mean as a result served 12 aces to this point. 40-30. And Becker has taken some of the aggressiveness out of Sampras. Changed the momentum from being down a break 2-3 in the first set. To going out to win at 6-4. Oh. Puts the volley away pretty aggressively, and he has the lead on serve two games to one, and one set to love against Sampras. So, which is often the case here in the, the latter stages of the year in Sweden. It's the Stockholm Open. You're watching Pete Sampras and Boris Becker in the semi-final. Cliff Drysdale alongside Tony Trebert. 15 love. Look at the Sampras serve percentage of first serves in 55 percent. First serve points won 56 percent. Second serve points won at 60 percent. That is low, particularly the first serve percentage points won by Sampras. It's so only his second ace. Average throughout this tournament, Sampras had been winning 85 percent of his first serve points. Here, only 56 percent. Again, Becker going after the Sampras second serve, a good solid forehand. He got it up a little bit high, but the pace on the shot made it difficult for Sampras. 30 all. Sampras first serve is letting him down to this point. Crucial moment. He just, uh, what happened there, Tony? I mean, he had to have been. Yeah. But let's watch Pete now. Watch his head come up when this backhand goes past him. He's down to volley click and it goes up over his racket. But again, Sampras didn't do enough for the first volley. He's not getting any pace on it and he's given Becker too many opportunities and Boris has taken advantage. Break point. Ace for Sampras. You know, this looks kind of mundane. First set is over. It's two games to one. But believe me, this is a crucial stage of this match for Becker particularly. If he can get the early break, he could serve it out. If he doesn't get a break and Sampras wins this set, you can bet that Sampras is going to win the match. So this is a very tight story here for Becker. A win for Becker would get him bonus points, beating the top player in the world and would help his chances for Frankfurt a lot. Game point, Sampras. A winning volley by Sampras, but very tentative. Watch the forehand volley. It's very short. Did nothing with it. He was able to get away with it. Oh. 
wide. Cheers. Or you could see that ball curving mm -hmm. in the air. He hit it with the side spin and just gave it a little too much, just a fraction too much. Deuce. Again, keep riveted to this match if you're interested in the outcome at this stage because this is a crucial stage. Well, Becker had a chance and made a good solid backhand cross court. Sampras had the answer Sampras. with the drop volley. Becker had time, set up, had his choice of shots. Yeah, you st I still didn't get the feeling that Sampras moved to that ball authoritatively, you know, and put it away. Well, the again. first volley is just not, not doing very much for him at all. There was another one right there. Yeah, that time he did pick it and put it away perfectly. Sampras holds on. It is two games all now as he saves a break point. Well, Just watch where the Sampras volley lands. Gives Becker another shot at him. See, just past the service line. Sampras ended up winning the point, but you can't give a good player like Becker two and three tries to pass you because he'll take advantage of it. Well, Becker's been getting 57% of his first serves in, winning 79% of those first serves, and also 41% of the second serve. So that's where he gets in trouble on the second serve. He gets that first one in, he's doing very well. Because if you can stay up at 60%, then you're in good shape. And your first serve like Becker has done so far. 30 love, Becker. Thirteen aces. This is as well as I've seen Becker serve for a while. He has thrown in some double faults, but he's really fooling Sampras. Oh. Game, Becker. Becker holds on. We're on stir 3-2. He's holding on relatively easily now. Set. Fine passing shot by Becker. Not a bad volley by Sampras. A little deeper that time, but Becker had the answer. Put a little more vim behind that first serve. He couldn't help it. The ball came so fast at him. Just a firm wrist. Got a lot of pace on that volley. 15 all. You can feel the confidence in Becker getting higher and higher. He's taking more chances on the return of serve. He's going over the ball on both sides. See the little ball boys at net with those rackets with loose netting. Ooh, Sampras had a perfect look at that high forehand 15, and he missed it. 15-30. Well, we'll see if that becomes a costly miss. An absolute sitter. And again, not a very confident looking Sampras at this point, particularly at the net. Also, first serves letting him down. Another missed forehand 15, from Sampras, 40. and uh, Becker's got a couple of break points. And again, remember that high forehand volley, that absolute sitter. You just can't afford to miss those against the player of the quality of Boris Becker.
Picked that one off the shoelaces for a clean winner, and he had to because the return was good. Becker anticipated that he was going out wide to the forehand. The return was great. Look where it is, right on the so Sampras shoe tops, and the forehand volley directed perfectly. A heck of a play by both players. Still break point for Becker. He misses that, steers it long, and there is the first break of the second set. It goes to Becker. And who'd have believed it? He leads by four games to two. He broke Sampras twice in the first set. And Tony, as you pointed out, in his last match, Sampras didn't lose but five points. There is Barbara Feltis Becker, Boris's wife. Chewing on her credential, they're a little bit nervous. <laughs> She's in pretty good shape right now if Boris keeps playing the way he is because Sampras is bewildered. Very, very poor volleying by the number one player in the world. And also, serve has let him down. Big chance here for Becker to stretch his lead. 15 love. 15 love Becker. He's won this uh, Stockholm Open three times, as you pointed out a couple of times. He's won it twice here in the Globe Arena, as you watch the replay. He also won it once in the Kung Liga Hallen, uh, which was a much smaller arena that seated about 4,000 people, and the Stockholm Open was played there for a long time. That's why at 15 all. No letters, please. I think that means King's Hall. I played there a couple of times in the old days, and uh, it was a very intimate arena. This is not. The seat's about 10,000 people here, but they're not more than about three to maybe 35, maximum 4,000 here for the semifinals. See the difference, Sampras on the dead run to try to make the passing shot after the Becker first volley. Becker's been able to get to the Sampras volley, set up, and then make his shot. And that means you have choices of which way you go with it. body and again he couldn't get out of the way of it to get a free swing at the ball miss hit and Becker's got a couple of game points to get him to 5-2 Becker's done that a lot on the second serve we've mentioned this is a very fast surface and I think that's a great play on a server to go into the body of the opponent you have to get out of the way and still try to make a shot Double fault number seven. Not a bad effort, Reeve really, Becker. That's not nerves. He was going for a little bit extra, trying to surprise him. So he's Becker served 13 aces and seven double faults. Sampras three aces and three double faults. Don't get too loose if you're Boris Becker. Another Jeez. double yeah. fault, and the score is deuce. You know, Tony, we watched uh, Sampras win the U.S. Open for the first time when he was just a kid, and he's won it again now, and clearly the top player in the world. And you look at him now, and you say, well, I'm not sure that the kid really cares about this match, but oh. when you saw him win that U.S. Open, he had the same kind of an attitude. He does care. Absolutely. You know he cares. He's been dying to play tennis after being off so much. All of a sudden, those two double faults loom large as now Sampras has break point. You can see the confidence. Advantage Good return here by Sampras. Sampras. Waited till Becker made his move. Chance for Sampras to get back on serve in this second set. He steers that one wide, and I tell you what, Tony, we are going to remember those two double faults because he really handed that game back to Pete Sampras. So we're back on serve. 
fourth, which won the only three that he played in. Corder and Agassi were victims of it in the first two, and then he beat Becker in the final in Rome. Medvedev won the first two clay court super nines, and then Agassi came roaring back in Toronto and won one, and then Chang won Cincinnati. We're in Stockholm now, and the Paris Open will take place next week. Coverage on ESPN starts on Thursday. Two double faults have given Sampras new life in this match. He was looking in real bad shape. Another high volley. 15 all. If it hit the forehand volley here, see to the ball, but you go ahead and play. <laughs> cute, cute little guy said, why'd you do that to me? I'm not sure. <laughs> I got a racket in my hand. <laughs> the Sampras forehand volley has been weak today. It's very flat, very tentative. Well, I'm glad you have to try to explain that, Tony, because I have no explanation for how he could miss those two easy high forehand volleys. It's not an excuse at all. It's just mechanically, I think he'd be better off hitting a little underspin. Now, you see, that's what's hard to explain. You miss a forehand yeah. volley like that and then rip off that forehand winner. This is a confidence factor here. He's very confident on the forehand. He believes he can do that at the moment. He apparently doesn't believe he can make the good crisp forehand volley and get it where he wants it. 30-15. Well, that is a terrific shot from Becker. I was watching that one carefully because he's done so much damage going down the line. That time he hits a cross court clean crisp winner. And Becker stayed down so beautifully throughout that stroke. When the ball's lower, the secret is get your head down near the line of the, the side of the ball and stay there throughout the shot. He did it great. Oh. Big chance for Becker now looking to the second serve at 30 all. Oh. He missed it. Yep. yep. 40, 30. Just. Boy, it was close. I like the way Becker is going after it right now, the way he's trying to play it, going for his passing shots. He's going after the return to serve. Not waiting for something to happen from Sampras. He's going to make it happen himself if he can. Yeah, except that Tony, he, he, he really let it slip in the last game when he served those two double faults. No question. Sampras continues to struggle on the first serve. Game point. Another cross-court attempt. Sampras. That one in the net. Sampras holds on, and we are even. It is four games all in the second set. Four games all. Fairly count. You just feel how tight it's getting. Not the players are getting tight, but the tense, tenseness, the closeness of the situation. Even my buddy Tony's palms are beginning yeah. to get a little sweaty. I can feel it. Hey! This is what makes it fun when it gets close to two real champions. The ebb and flow of this kind of a match. Fifteen love. Ace. Fourteen. He went there the first time, hit a net cord, went right back and did it again. Thought you love. I get the feeling that Sampras is a little flat footed on the return of serve. Maybe that's because of the speed of the court. You got to sort of plant yourself and try to block the ball. Portugal. Game points coming up here for Becker to go up 5-4 second set and he won the first. Broke Sampras twice in the first set. He's broken him here and had the lead and then let it slip on his serve. It's four games all.
Becker. Becker has the lead five games to four. Sampras will serve. The winner of this match takes on the winner of Kofelnikov, Ivan Nizovic in the final. Our coverage this afternoon, not because of your announcers here, Cliff <laughs> Bryant and Tony Trevor, because this has been a really absorbing match. Semi-final of the Stockholm Open. It's live coverage, and Pete Sampras is serving now down a set and 4-5. Talking about what makes the difference in this match, uh, and Tony, one of the things without doubt is uh, first serve percentages for Sampras. Love he just hasn't team. got enough in. No, he hasn't, and he's been very shaky on the volley, particularly the forehand volleying side. Love 15. That is why Becker potentially three points from a place in the final here. I think you'll see Becker stay, step in and take a crack here. Double fault. Love, Love 30. 32 points from a win over Sampras, a top player in the world. That'll get him extra bonus points in his race to Frankfurt. Sampras looking for some big first serves here. 15 touches. Ace number four goes with four double faults for Sampras. Oh, that's a terrific shot. He knew that uh, he was just a couple of points away from, and he went for it all, Tony. That's the way to play this game on this surface, and it worked. Again, a terrible 15, forehand volley, 40. though, by Sampras. Lands it very short, right back at Becker. Gave Boris another shot at him, and he took advantage of it. Match point. Sampras saves one. That is his fifth ace. 30-40. Still match point for Becker. He did it. An extraordinary shot by Becker. Sampras thought that he had the approach shot hit just fine, but Becker anticipated where he was going, hooked it cross court. Becker, you will see him in Frankfurt. According to the records, that's not certain, but take it from me. He'll be there. Great match, Tony, from him. I'm very, very impressed with the way Becker played. Not only his attitude, he served well, but he made up his mind early to go after the return of serve. Made a lot of terrific returns and passing shots. Here's match point. Backhand by Sampras. He thinks he's got a winner. It was, again, way too short. Barely past the service line. Gave Becker a swing at it, and the champion that he is, he took advantage of it. Three times these two players have played in Stockholm. Three times Boris Becker has been successful. You know, uh, the thing about...